Hey, it is your buddy, peace and harmony with you here today. And much love going out to the Empowered Harmonizers. We're zooming in and focusing in on a great viewer question. And that was uh, to really look at and uh, truly dissect and understand a covert narcissist spouse. Uh, she's stating basically that her spouse, after learning of her goals, her objectives, something she set out to accomplish and she's getting really excited about it. She's getting really enthusiastic. Something that's very important to her. She can just basically just feel the tension in the air that, you know, there's now going to be a sort of uh, vengeance or distrust or a uh, really kind of a, a bucking of horns or as if there might be some competition. And he is not very supportive. And we really want to, to look at, in, at this and understand how a covert narcissist will um, really attach to even a spouse, a long-term relationship, is in a very dismissive or avoidant attachment style, meaning that they become triggered or threatened by learning that someone might be growing, they might be traveling, they might be doing well. They might be improving themselves personally, health-wise, financially, professionally, in their circle of friends. You know, it just, they want to automatically kind of shake in their boots and they might not act right away, but there can be a very dismissive or um, sort of disdainful um, attitude or era, aura or energy field around these people. And when we talk about meaning dismissive, it's just kind of like, oh, that's not important, that doesn't really matter. But it's it's not so much as disinterest as it is kind of with a, a sprinkling of scorn or really being, um, having, you know, disdain, which means kind of contempt. And to have contempt for someone means like, well, how could you? You know, it, it's, it has this sort of air of unbelievability. And when you look at someone with scorn or disdain, you're really trying to crumble them down into dust. I mean, you're really trying to break them down. And this is a very, very difficult attitude and feeling in one's environment to handle and deal with on a daily basis because it can really set you back. I mean, it can really be worse than a stone wall because here you've been made vulnerable and you're trying to trust this individual and they're coming at you with a feeling of contemptuousness, contempt, or competition. And competition means that there's one winner and someone is going to lose. So, you know, when you put your goals out there, something especially like we are in February of the year 2018, you know, you might be looking at your week goals or your month goals or where you want to be this year, what you want to do, how you want to improve how you want to gain a stronger foothold in things that are important to you. I mean, this is what it's all about. And when you're talking about a healthy attachment style, you should be able to share this information with people and they are not threatened. In fact, they're actually excited for you. They're supportive. They're like, oh, yay, you know, keep us posted. And they want to be there to add input or contribution or share a thing or two and they want to just they'll let you have it they'll let you have your happiness they'll let you have your goals they'll let you go for it and they won't be disparaging and have you know a, a threatened or fearful sort of feeling where you know you might find things very difficult then to um you know to attain your goals with this person around because of just this air of of scorn or contempt or dismissiveness that can oftentimes, you know, people oftentimes subconsciously, they count on others to be there or to share in their success or share in their process. And when this person isn't there, they really miss it. And then they oftentimes will give up. So that's why we see this, you know, falling back into apathy of people who are in relationships with a covert narcissist. They'll be very apathetic. They won't really care about their goals. So they just kind of feel lost in the wind that, you know, what they want doesn't really matter. And, you know, they won't really kind of follow up on that inspiration. And, you know, they'll always have that sort of feeling that they could have done more or become more. And so that's why I really recommend, you know, the recovery journal, because it gives you a, a chance first thing in the morning to develop a secure attachment within yourself. Because when it boils right down, you are responsible and accountable for you, your goals, your objectives, what you accomplish, how you organize yourself, 
how you set yourself up in your appointments, how you keep yourself accountable. You know, you can't shoulder it. You can't yoke it. You know, when you get, when you move on forward in life and you encounter a different, you know, a number of life experiences, life learning lessons, you know, you find really that you're going to need to make adjustments. You're going to need to make some general adjustments. And oftentimes when you found yourself in hurtful relationships with the borderline, the covert narcissist or the psychopath, it really, you know, shreds apart your fabric for relating securely, not only to other people, but namely with oneself. So the recovery journal is the number one thing you can do to really solidify that attachment, healthy attachment with yourself, where you kind of pour forth all your dreams, aspirations, goals, things that you want, and then including that with a walk, you know, just going for a little bit of a walk, even 20 minutes a day, you know, just to kind of, you'll let things kind of percolate along and then you'll find yourself coming up with solutions. Hey, I could walk up to that one store and I could pick this up. Um, hey, I could, um, you know, maybe I'll do this and this and move my furniture around the, in the living room. Hey, maybe wouldn't it be nice to have a splash of green in the kitchen or a splash of yellow? You know, or can we, why don't we just redo the kitchen towels? So little ideas will come forward to you when you walk. So you're developing more of a self-reliance. And so when it comes to feeling that sabotage and that competition close up, you really need to not let that deter you and hold you back because it is those issues, especially on the covert narcissist parenting style, which really sets back the developmental stages of the children and not to mention the other adults in the area. And it really is a sad thing. So it's good that you noticed it. I'm, I'm glad you shared it with us here at the channel. And, um, you know, I think it's very important to then from now, you know, if you have found yourself kind of a victim of um, when, it, when it really becomes a rivalry problem, um, a rival for time, a rival for money, a rival for your schedule, you know, you're going to find that there's going to be some contempt or scorn or you know, you might find this person raging a little bit, um, getting anger, you know, that their their support might not be present for them to, you know, because that's one of the problems of the covert narcissist as well as the psychopath in their attachment style is they always want you to be thinking about them. I mean, which can be a wonderful thing um, to have people to think about and to help and have healthy relationships. But when it becomes so out of balance that you're then, you know, making all the, you know, your needs no longer matter or what you want to pursue at this time in your life just does not get supported. You need to give some weight to it. You need to give some credence and you can hold yourself accountable on the recovery journal where you really, you know, it's for your, your eyes only. So if you shared this with them, you know, don't feel like you have to share the rest of your dreams then with these naysayers because they're going to be the ones who shot it down. Hey, it's a rainy day. They're going to rain on your parade. It's too snowy. It's too cold. It's it's too warm. It's too nice. I mean, whatever. I mean, there's going to always be the fault finder um, in this. And they will oftentimes tell you not to do things which are actually very healthy for you. They're going to try to keep you small, keep you under reins, keep you where they can see you. So, um, you know, if you've kind of let that um, information out, just feel free to keep it kind of tight lipped. Do a lot of organizing in your um, recovery journal, even if it's kind of planning out and getting some positivity, go for a short walk where you can percolate and think around some of those positive ideas that come up and you can really find some solutions and have time for yourself. Um, create a very uh, special or sacred area of your of, of your home. I definitely recommend um, you know having like, a, a little sacred area where you can have quiet time or reading or soft lighting or soft music, 432 hertz, um, where you can plan and do your, you know, keep your recovery journal, keep your other, um, your, uh, your, your, uh, proc you know, things I've been procrastinating on, your life lessons, you can keep those readily available. So you're kind of tuning into that. It's your own special space um, so that you know that you have it. And then on your, um, appointment book where you're plugging in your recovery date and you're going on your emotions, meaning like I'm going to spend just half an hour feeling gratitude or feeling excitement or feeling curiosity 
who are feeling intellectual. We're really kind of getting a mastery over your emotions because this gets lost in the shuffle when you are with a covert narcissist. You're, if your emotional health does not matter, then you're not going to develop the emotional vocabulary or the richness that you have as a person and kind of pursue these things. And yes, I mean, it can be an hour by hour, minute by minute basis, but sometimes the greatest virtues or the greatest uh, journeys really are a matter of inches. You know, just going those few extra inches gets the goal, you know, across the finish line. Um, it's those couple extra inches of the highest jumper that makes the winning shot. And so sometimes you need to look at your own apply these sort of normal like coaching tips to your own life. Sometimes it's a matter of a few inches, um, taking that extra walk, um, reading that little extra book for 15 minutes, um, doing your emotions for 15 minutes and getting some mastery. You know, and you should approach it with a sense of mystery, not that you have to master things and be sort of in a, a, a gentle moving forward basis. In other words, the longest journeys are little by little by little. It's not like you have to go and, you know, try this for eight, 10 hours, you know, l learn to keep it at a balanced state, but keep it sort of private to yourself because this is your own gem. It's something that's important to you. So you do need to protect it. Um, any of the great writers, artists ha have known this. Um, and that's why they'll oftentimes surround themselves with other artists or other friends who are their support group. So it's so important to have a support group. And when we talk about this on the channel, we talk about also um, how important it is to have a mentor. So either, you know, um, through through podcasts, through videos, through books that you read, through great art, um, great uh, uh, books, you know, great authors, um, other people who you might admire on TED Talks, um, professionals who have presentations here on YouTube. Um, you can find your favorites and really keep them as part of your mentor group and really, you know, but, but find and know that it's important sometimes just to have a go-to person that you can email or call when you're, you know, like you did, like sharing your, your questions here so we can really flesh it out and realize, um, you know, that, you know, you are going to, you are going to make the most influence over where you go and, and pull that effect away from this other person, even if it is a spouse, you can do it. It will help you be harmonious in your relationship. This is your buddy, peace and harmony with you here today. And I hope that these videos do help. Please share, please subscribe for more great tools, videos, discussion, and support.